In today's video, I'm going to be deriving some of the equations that we use for kinetic theory of gases. And they are based on four assumptions that I've gone through in a previous video, and I will link that at the end of this so that you can see it. But we are basically deriving two equations today. The first one is PV is equal to one third nmc squared. And the second one is that half mc squared or the kinetic energy of a gas is equal to 3 over 2 kt. In other words, that the temperature of an ideal gas is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of the particles. Now to start off we're going to imagine a container of gas, just like this one with dimensions x, y and z. Inside that container are a number of particles of gas. We are going to be focusing at first on just looking at one particle and figuring out what happens with that one particle, and then we'll multiply up to the total number of particles that would be in the gas. Let's look at our particle of mass m here. It is traveling to the right, and what's going to happen is it's going to hit that shaded face that you see, the, the face yz, and it's going to bounce off the shaded face and bounce all the way back and hit the shaded face's opposite partner on the other side. And because all of these collisions are elastic, one of the assumptions, no kinetic energy is lost, and therefore none of the speed of the particle is lost. So we can say that as the particle moves to the right and collides with the shaded face, it has a momentum of plus mu. And we say plus because it's going to the right, and that's the convention. When it bounces off the shaded face and comes back, it still has the same velocity, so we still have a velocity of u. It still has the same mass, uh, but this time we're our momentum is going to be in the opposite direction, so our momentum after is going to be minus mu. Therefore, we can say that the change in momentum is the momentum after, minus mu, minus the momentum before, which is minus mu, and so we end up with minus 2mu. Now, we can take the absolute value of this, because we could have just as easily started with the particle on the right going left, and we'd have ended up with 2mu. So we're going to say, okay, our delta p is the absolute value of that 2mu. So that's our first thing that we need. Now we're going to do a little side calculation here. The distance that the particle travels between collisions. So as it moves from the extreme left over to the shaded face and back again, the distance that it travels in that is going to be 2 times x. Therefore, the time between collisions is going to be our distance divided by our speed, which we've already said is u, and so 2x over u is time between collisions. Now we can take these two equations and say, right, well, we know that force is the change in momentum over time. So our change in momentum between collisions is 2mu, and the time we've said is 2x over u. So if we rearrange that, we end up with mu squared divided by x. That is our expression for force. Now obviously we're trying to get to a place where we're finding the pressure. So we're going to use this force and we know that pressure is force over area. So we take our mu squared over x, which is our expression for force, and we divide that by the area of the shaded face, which of course is y times z giving us mu squared over x, y, z. And of course, x, y, z is the volume of our container, so we end up with pressure is equal to mu squared over v. Now this is the pressure exerted by a single particle. So this is where we want to now move from talking about a single particle into talking about all the particles of the gas. In any particular sample of gas, we would have n particles. So we're going to multiply the pressure exerted by each particle by n. But the pressure exerted by these particles are from our shaded face to its opposite partner. So only one third of those particles would actually be going from the shaded face to its opposite partner, because another third would be going front to back, and another third would be going top to bottom we're going to end up multiplying by one-third n, because that's the number of particles that will be exerting this pressure. 
The other qualification that we're going to make is we are not actually going to use u, the average velocity of the particles. Because the problem is, as the particles move forwards and backwards across the container, you statistically, you would say that half the particles at any one time would be moving to the right, and half the particles would be moving to the left. And if you were going to find the average velocity of those particles, that's going to end up being zero. So instead, we use something called the root mean square speed. And that is given this symbol C. What that does is it removes this possibility of an average speed of zero. And root mean square speed is exactly what it says. Take your speeds, square them, find the mean of that squares, those squares, and then get the square root of that mean. Okay, now if we go back to our expression that we had for pressure, we're going to multiply this by a third n, and we're going to replace the u with a c. So we've got pressure then is equal to one third n times m c squared over v. And if we simplify that out, we get one third n m c squared over v, or p times v is equal to one third n m c squared. And that is what we were trying to de derive. For our second derivation, we're going to use that equation. So let's write it out again, one third n m c squared. And we're going to start picking it apart a little. So we can say that PV is equal to, if we take the half MC squared out here, and of course half MC squared or half MV squared is something that is very familiar to us. That is the kinetic energy of the particle. And remembering that is where we're trying to go with this derivation. If we take the half MC squared out of there, then we're left with two thirds N because two thirds times a half is one third. Now we're going to take our ideal gas equation, which again, we have worked on in another video. That is PV is equal to NKT. And what we've got here are two expressions that are equal to PV. And of course, we can equate those. So we've got NKT is equal to two thirds N times a half MC squared. The N's cancel and we have KT equals two-thirds times a half mc squared. Now you might think to yourself, well, why doesn't he just multiply the two-thirds by the half? Because we want to keep this as a whole expression, because that is the expression for kinetic energy. So instead, we're going to take the two-thirds over here and divide by the two-thirds, and so that becomes three over two kt is equal to a half mc squared. And that is what we were after. What this tells you is that the temperature of an ideal gas is directly proportional to its kinetic energy. So sometimes you see this written as the kinetic energy is equal to three over two kT. It's directly proportional because both of these are constants. Three over two is obviously a constant and K is the Boltzmann constant. So remember, if you're asked, why does this produce a straight line through the origin? Well, because it's in the format Y equals MX. And 3 over 2k is a constant value, so therefore your gradient is going to be constant.